this is the Azure User Group. We meet the second Wednesday of every month from 3 to 4.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time um, and during uh, via live meeting. You can also find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, in Twitter, or at azureusergroup.net. Our topic today is going to be on Greenfield Azure development uh, with CQRS. So it, this is going to look at why CQRS uh, might be a good architectural choice for your project and how you can take advantage of the different feature, features in Azure, uh, both in Windows and SQL, in order to build a highly scalable and high-performing ASP.NET MVC application. Um, and our presenter, David Horster, uh, will will probably give us a, a little bit more in-depth um, intro for us. Uh, so our presenter today is David Horster, and uh, I really liked like this bit that he's a recovering corporate financial analyst, and he's been working in Microsoft.net framework since the early 1.0 beta, betas. Um, he's the co-founder of Brain Credits, and you can find his website there, www.braincredits.com. And it's a recent startup that's hoping to change the way people learn on the web. He's the co-chair of the Pittsburgh.net user group and organizer of several um, recent Pittsburgh code camps and an occasional speaker at um, user groups and code camps around the area as well. So, David, uh, thanks so much uh, for agreeing to present today, and, and I'll hand it over to you in, in just a second. Um, in case not everyone's able to stay with us until the end of the presentation, our next meeting will be on October 12th, and it will be on load testing with Azure application uh, with VS 2010, and our presenter will be Tim Starr. Uh, so with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to you, David. Thank you very much, Brianna. Um, let me uh, clean up those polls. So uh, while we were waiting, I just decided to put together a couple of polls to see people's familiarity with CQRS. Uh, so it seems like a pretty decent mix um, across the board between people who are pretty familiar with it uh, and people who aren't familiar with it at all, which is good. Um, helps me kind of gauge where we're going. And um, let me just remove this other one. So if anyone's ever used CQRS, what, what framework have they used before? So uh, it looks like uh, I think this one got taken down right before the, the meeting kicked off. But um, there's a couple frameworks out there that kind of help you write CQRS applications. Uh, the one that I use to uh, write brain credits and also another sample app that I'll show is uh, NCQRS, which um, it's not a bad framework. There's uh, good and bad parts to it. Um, but really, they um, sometimes really, as core, you probably don't really need a, a framework. Uh, so let me get rid of that poll. It's on not really having much feedback. <laughs> Just talking into a mic. Um, let me bring up my slide deck here. So hopefully everybody can see that. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, Greenfield Development with CQRS and Windows Azure. Um, so it's a long title, but basically at its core, if you're starting up a brand new site or company, um, this talk might be of interest to you as to why uh, CQRS and Azure uh, may be a good fit for uh, your product or your idea. So some of the goals for today, um, so with an hour and a half, I have a, a number of slides and a bunch of demos to show, so hopefully I can uh, kind of squeeze them all together. It's almost like having two presentations in one, uh, one sort of a, a intro to CQRS, and then the second one is really incorporating that into Azure, so you're, uh, you're uh, getting uh, your money's worth today. So two for the price of one, which is free. Uh, so the first goal is understanding CQRS architecture and some of the benefits and drawbacks, and really just touching on the major um, uh, objects within a CQRS architecture framework. And then the second one, uh, main goal, is really incorporating that into Azure. So what would what the architecture look like, um, how you may use queues and blobs, maybe some of the other um, aspects of Azure to kind of hook your application all up together, 
and then using uh, table storage within Azure for some of the event sourcing repositories and, and maybe some of the, also some of the additional logging uh, that you may want to do. Um, overall, though, the goal, I, I kind of want to tell a story, I think, at the beginning part of this talk and really a little bit of how we came about using um, Azure and CQRS for brain credits. Some brain uh, some brain credits, some prerequisites for this talk before we get into it. So just some knowledge and familiarity with domain-driven uh, domain design. Um, I do not claim to be an expert. I probably will say a few things today that uh, if there are any experts out there, I'm sure they'll, they'll uh, won't agree with them or I'll get something wrong. So uh, I'll expect to <laughs> hear about that. Uh, so I'm, I am still kind of getting up to speed on a lot of this stuff. There's a lot out there. So, um, but I think just a, a basic knowledge uh, will definitely help you. Some knowledge of Azure objects, so queues, blobs, stables. Um, a little bit of knowledge about ASP on NMVC. We'll be talking about controllers and calling some stuff from, from uh, controllers if, uh, if time allows. And then also uh, probably the big one is leaving the notion that your data store must be normalized to the nth degree uh, sort of at the virtual door uh, for this talk. So um, it's probably the biggest hurdle to get over when you start talking about CQRS and some of the aspects um, that it or some of the benefits that it may bring to you if you want to take advantage of them. So that's probably the biggest uh, hurdle that I've always found. Uh, just a real quick um, intro about me. So Brandon did a uh, nice little overview of who I am. So I'm a C Sharp MVP. I was awarded in 2011 of April. Um, it's a joke I've used in the past, but um, the recount is still going on. We're not actually sure how that happened. And um, there's probably uh, a good chance they'll be revoking that probably pretty soon. So I'm just joking. I'm also the co-founder of BrainCreds.com, as Brianna said. That's kind of my night job. My day job is... I am a senior technical, senior technical director for Resources Global Professionals. I run a, a, a product development group for a product that is uh, it's a web-based hosted product, uh, pretty much the antithesis of uh, anything being hosted in Azure. So it's more of a traditional ASP.NET web forms application that we are in the process of migrating to MVC, uh, albeit very slowly. Um, but it is uh, it's an older application, very much a legacy application. Um, but it provides a nice contrast to what we did with brain credits. And so um, I think with a little bit of the story that I'll tell, um, I think you can kind of see why uh, maybe a traditional application may not be a good fit for what you want to do, where, whereas something with a something in the cloud and with secure as maybe a little bit of a better fit. Um, I'm the president of the Pittsburgh Internet User Group. You can follow me on Twitter and on my blog, or if you want to email me, here's all my contact information. Um, I don't tweet a lot, and I don't blog a lot. Uh, so email is probably the best thing to do if you want to get in touch with me. In terms of any credit or any questions you may have. And I'm also on Stack Overflow every now and then. And you kind of follow me there. Um, people like my Simpsons avatar. So a little bit of the backstory. Actually, let me just back, back that up real quick. Um, so while I was at Resources Global Professionals, or while I was still there, um, as I said, the application that we work on is very much a traditional web forms application. Um, and as a result of that, um, the back-end repository is very much a, a normalized database. Um, lots of tables. Probably, I mean, it's probably a mid-sized application in terms of its database size. Probably in the neighborhood of 60 to 80 database tables. Um, tons and tons of sort procedures. And um, unfortunately, probably a lot of business logic in those sort procedures. So um, it's probably not too much different than what you see in a lot of um, applications out there today. Um, but my co-founder and I kind of came up with this idea for brain credits, and as we were um, researching it and trying to figure out what, how we wanted to architect it, we sort of used the product that I work on today as sort of a, um, a starting point as to what probably we wouldn't want to do. Um, and the big reason for that is while the application does a very good job of what it's supposed to do, it doesn't, in our opinion, doesn't really scale a whole lot because of, I think, the nature of it. And very much it's a... Um, a lot of the processing for the application is very much synchronous in nature, um, and probably due to a lot of tight coupling uh, amongst the layers of the application. So as a result, um, I think scalability is probably um, a little bit of an issue uh, with the application. So uh, we wanted to kind of create something that was um, not like that. We really wanted to create an application that was a little bit more Flexible, definitely could scale, definitely handle some volume. So that's that's kind of where we, we decided to put the list together for brain credits. 